Welcome to another edition of the Bellhaven Blazers Coaches Show. I'm Kenneth Nash, joined by Coach McCorkle. Coach, thanks for jumping on. Thank you. The Blazers are obviously headed into the uh, the final run in of their 2021 fall season. They're coming off of a, a 29 nothing loss at UMHP. We're going to talk about that game, some some areas that the coach keyed in on as opportunities for improvement uh, ahead of a homecoming game against McMurray this weekend. We'll also talk to some Bellhaven seniors, uh, seven seniors in this class. Uh, we'll talk to them uh, briefly, kind of get their thoughts on what the Bellhaven programs meant to them and the strides that they've seen this this uh, this group take forward over the past few years. Coach, uh, obviously we're going to start with UMHB. We, we haven't had an opportunity to really talk about it, a loss in quite a while. You guys were riding a four-game win streak, went to number two UMHB, um, put up a, a really pretty close fight up until the, the last couple of uh, last couple of drives. Your obviously overall takeaways, I know it's not the result you wanted um, by any means, and, and you've talked about there's no moral victories, um, but but what were your kind of takeaways from this game? Well, you're right. There's no moral victories, and we're never going to be satisfied with a loss no matter who we're playing. Oh. I don't care if they put Alabama on the schedule. We're going to show up to win, you yeah. know, because that's, that's what, <clears throat> as a competitor, you're supposed to do. Um, but I think our kids did play really hard. Um, you know, we did hold them to the lowest point total they've had so far this year, lost the game, but there are some – things in there to look at that say, you know what, we're, we're, we're in a good spot. We are making marked improvement, um, but we've got we made way too many mistakes in all three phases to go into a game like that against a team of that caliber uh, and have a chance to win against a team who hasn't lost a regular season game since 2015. Um, and that's really who we play. You know, this is a team that, you know, regularly scores 70 or 80 points, you know, mm -hmm. so it really is a great uh, measuring stick for where your program is. If you want to know where you, where you stand, go play Mary Harden Baylor. Yeah. And, and we found out. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, last night, for anybody that didn't get to catch it, you were on the uh, Talking Sports Live show on ESPN The Zone locally here in the Jackson area, and you mentioned you know, that's the standard you guys want to be at, right? You want to be in that upper echelon, and, and this was a chance for you guys to see where you guys need to get better to be at that top tier. Uh, you, did you feel like you guys came away from that with, with an opportunity to go, okay, you know, we've obviously taken some big strides forward even in the, in, since the spring season, Um but obviously, there's there's still a long way to go. Is that kind of your, your uh, interpretation of, of last week? It is, yeah. We, we've definitely taken some strides, and you, you could see that uh, throughout the course of that game, knowing who we were playing. Um, but as you said a minute ago, that's that's not what we came here to do. Yeah. You know, to, to steal a line from Rex Ryan, I don't think Dr. Parrott hired me to kiss Mary Harden Miller's rings. Yeah. You know, he hired me to go get one of our own. Yeah. Um, and then that's what we're going to keep striving for. So, yeah, things you can take away from it that are that are good as far as, you know, measuring, okay, where is our talent? Where do we need to go? Yeah. Um, where are things schematically that we missed that they exposed, which they did a good job. They, they exposed us in a couple areas that we were able to learn from. And, you know, our kids learning how to play in those games. You know, I fully intend on – taking the Bellhaven Blazers into the playoffs someday yeah. soon. And yeah. we've got to know what that feels like when you get there. Well, now we kind of know. You know, yeah. you, you can't press, you can't play tight. You've just got to be you and play. Uh, and I think those are some of the things that may have got us as we, we pressed a little bit at times. It was interesting because it felt like we moved the ball fairly well in that game. Um, we, we crossed the field, got into to UMHB territory on all but I think two drives um, up, up until late in the game. But it was it was kind of finishing those drives, and they started to kind of stall out a little bit once you got inside the the, the 45, 40 yard line. You, for you as a coach, what do you think you can key in on as, as a reason for that? And you, how do you go about kind of improving that so so the next time you have that opportunity? You know, you get across the field, you get to that def the, the the other team's area, and you're you're still able to to can you marching forward, I guess. Yeah, well, I think when you play a team like that, it's harder to overcome mistakes. You know, we yeah. had a few drops that really ended drives and hurt us. Yeah, um, we had a few protection issues that put us behind the sticks. When you get behind the sticks against a team like that, your drive will stall out in a hurry. Yeah. Um, so there were definitely a lot of. Uh, lessons learned on how to create and keep momentum mm -hmm. in a game like that. You know, when you've got momentum in a game like that, um, you, you better be on point because you can it can flip in a heartbeat. Yeah. So it's it's always about the next play. Okay, good. You you got to second and four. You're in a good spot. Well, now let's get to third and one. Let's get a first down. Yeah. You know, instead of okay, next play, let's go back to third and eight. So just staying on schedule and, and learning to to be steady and just always play the next play is is something that uh, I think we probably took away from it and it'll make us better. The defense it felt like made some big plays and it was really up until late that the game kind of started to get away from you guys defensively. That was a big test for for you guys. Uh, you faced obviously some high power offenses there's not a whole lot of teams in the country that can play offense the way UMHB does defensively you feel like your defense was was kind of up to the test for for a large part of that game they were um, I, th I think they played hard I think they were up for it I think coach Connor and the guys had a really good plan uh, going into place 
Um, you know, I think they made really one really big explosive play that gave them a short field. You know, the last, it was 17 to nothing in the fourth quarter, mm-hmm. uh, and then they had two late <clears throat> scores on short fields. Yeah. Um, one of those credit to the offense. We turned the ball over, which is a little uncharacteristic. But um, mm-hmm. holistically, I think they did a good job um, keeping us in the game, giving our offense a chance that we, we didn't capitalize on. Yeah. Um, but real proud of what our defense did to, to give us a chance uh, late into the game. Uh, we're going to step aside real quick. When we come back, we'll talk to the Bellhaven senior class. We've got seven of them. Got a chance to ask them a couple of questions about their time at Bellhaven. Uh, just reflect on, on the, the strides this program has made and then individually. First up, we've got Justin Percy, defensive back for the Bellhaven Blazers. Justin, thanks for jumping on. Thank you. Justin spent five seasons with the Blazers, uh, wrapping up his final season of eligibility. He's been a big part of this Bellhaven defense, uh, which we know has been a big, big reason why the Blazers have had some success on the field this season. Justin, before we, you know, this will be pretty short, but I want to kind of just get your thoughts because you've been here for five years. Uh, you've seen this this program kind of at near the bottom, and you've seen it really take some strides over the past couple of seasons. What do you think has been a big reason for the success that Bellhaven has had? Uh, a bigger reason, I would say, is the camaraderie that the team has had. Like, over the past few years, from when McCorkle got here, mm-hmm. it was like people didn't really – it wasn't like togetherness. Yeah. And we we really knew that within ourselves. Yeah. But it's never been to a point <clears throat> where, like, we was able to, like, express that fully. Yeah. So, like, when McCorkle got here, it was put in place to where we was like, all right, if we want to win games, then we know this is what we need to do in order for us to actually come together and do a common goal of actually changing what Bellhaven was about. You're talking about this defense. This has obviously been a, a unit that's taken a big step forward even over the past two years and is really, I mean, you're limiting opponents to, to well under 300 yards of offense, uh, 140 passing yards per game this season. What has the defense done, even in the past year or so, that has really elevated them to this point where they're one of the best defenses in the conference? I feel, I feel <laughs> like it's really come down to a stance of our fundamentals. Like, every day in practice, we start off practice we stretch and then we go, we do Indy. Mm-hmm. Indy is a big deal for us because like when we do it, we able to work on like our stance. Mm-hmm. Like in football, you can't really do anything if you're not in a good stance. Yeah. Because you know, power comes from when you're low. Lowest yeah. man has the most power. So that's something that they gave us to actually help us maintain our, because we have athletic ability yeah. but without <clears throat> actually working on your athletic ability and doing things that's going to actually put you in the right position to accomplish things that you want, yeah. you aren't going to be able to accomplish those things. So I think that's a big part of it. The, uh, the the senior class, obviously a lot of you guys came back. You could have finished in the spring. You felt like there was something special going on here. You guys decided to come back. For you, what was the reason that you thought you wanted to return for one more year and, and see where you guys could take this thing? Uh, really, <clears throat> it's just unfinished business that we have within the conference, within ourselves. Like, yeah. We know that we have a lot to prove to everybody. Mm -hmm. And with that, we know that we actually have things within ourselves and we have the coaching staff, the players. We even have people like that our trainers, they help us and our uh, equipment managers. They do their best to make sure that we're on our cues so we can be able to perform in the games that we need to to win. So like, I think that's really a part of the reason why I want to come back because it's like, my brothers, I love my brothers a lot, and yep. we all know that it's something that we can do within this conference that's going to be a big deal for our school. Yeah. And with that, we want to be able to be here to witness that. We've got Mayo Asagunla, quarterback for the Bellhaven Blazers football team. Mayo, thanks for jumping on. Thank you. You've obviously been with the Blazers for three seasons. Uh, you've kind of had a varying role with Bellhaven. You got here, played a little wide receiver. You were part of the running game, played some quarterback. Now you are full-time quarterback for this program. Before we get into to kind of your, your time at Bellhaven and, and what you've experienced with the program, just you as a player, how do you feel like you've been able to adapt going from kind of just the athlete role into down that full-time quarterback role? Yes. Um, so I've, I've been here three years, um, and ever since the beginning, you know, I've, I've been a quarterback. Yeah. Um, but um, but trying to find ways to help the team um, yeah. to um, just to be an impact, yeah. um, to make a difference on the, uh, on the field, uh, especially on game day, you know? Yeah. Um, so when I first got here, uh, like you said, I played a lot of receiver. Yeah. Um, because we had um, uh, Hunter McKeachin, fifth year um, senior here. Yeah. Um, 
and I, I want to be able to help the team. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's my way of helping. Yeah. And then as as my role is transferred from receiver quarterback to just quarterback now. Yeah. Um, I feel like my um impact has continued to increase as well. One thing that we've talked about a lot on this show is is the balance of the offense. You guys, it doesn't mean 50-50 yeah. every game, but you guys can run the ball when you need to run it. You had three consecutive games at one point over 300 rushing yards. But you can also throw the ball when you need to throw it and, and be efficient in that manner. What does that mean for you as a quarterback when you when you know game to game that game plan is going to shift and, and you may be throwing the ball a lot or you may have a game where that you had a game early season where you threw the ball 11 or 12 times, but you guys ran it 60 plus times. What does that mean for you? Obviously, you're a heavy part of the running game too. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> as an offense, you know, I, I feel like over the past few years, we we just try to um, establish our identity, who we are versus who we play. Yeah. And I think this year we we're finally able to hit that groove of like like coach says all the time of of being able to do both. Yeah. You know, and um, a, a big part of um, my part in that is to be really efficient in the pass game. Yeah. But also, like you said, um, um, to to do my jobs in the read and the run game. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that as a team that we we've taken a big step this year in being able to, um, to execute when we need to. Yeah. Um, but to also just to play our game. Uh, one of the biggest things we we've been saying this year is um, like we're gonna play to our standard no matter the, the outside circumstances. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's been a really big part of offense this year. Um, and I'm really, really happy to be a part of that. So uh, before we finish up talking about football, Bell Haven's been a good place to you, right? Just yes. got engaged to Grace Edson, member of the volleyball team. What is Bell Haven as a university meant to you? Yeah, it's it's been good. Um, one one of my biggest things uh, when I was deciding uh, when I was leaving <clears throat> Central to decide where I wanted to go, um, I came here on a visit. And I'm I'm from Jackson, Mississippi, um, mm-hmm. which is you know so I'm I'm like 10, 15 minutes away. Yeah. And um, and like on my mind, high school wasn't thinking about Bellhaven at all. Yeah. And you know, when, to be honest, when I first got the call, uh, I was like Bellhaven, really. <laughs> but when I came here though, um, Coach McCorkle, uh, on my recruiting visit, he was straightforward, honest. Didn't really didn't, didn't, didn't try to recruit me to, to get me to come here. But told me the truth. Yeah, and I think I think I value that more than anything. And it was him him being honest with me, straightforward, explaining the situation, um, but also explaining the opportunities um, that I have here through the university and through football here. Yep. Uh, so I think that's that was the biggest part of me um, deciding to come here. But also, well, just as I was here, be able to grow, to be able to meet new people um, through different ministries of FCA, um, just different things, part of school, yeah, the math department, everything else. <clears throat> So it's been really cool. I really enjoyed it, and I want to trade trade for the world. Yeah, you got two games left. You guys are sitting at five and three, uh, four and three in conference play. You got McMurray this Saturday, and you got ETBU in a, in a week and a half. What is kind of the 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 I guess the vision for how you guys want to finish? Obviously, you want to finish with two two strong wins. But yes. how do you guys want to finish this season and kind of leave your mark on this program and this school? Yes, you know, every, like our, our motto is to go one and zero each week. Yeah, um, you know, so that, that that's never going to change. <clears throat> um, but you know, we're um, like we're. we're I've been here three years. And, yeah. You know, Brad's, uh, me and him, the only seniors on the offense right now. He's been here five. Yeah. You now we want to want to send send these guys up right and continue yeah. to um, bring momentum to the offseason, especially with um, the freshmen and the young guys coming up. Yeah. Uh, you know, so like my, my, my biggest mark is gonna is gonna be how well am I gonna lead the, the last two weeks um, to allow um, this team to to grow yeah. even when I'm gone. Yeah. Um, so that's my biggest uh, motto as as I play these last two games to play as hard as I can to um, help out in the future. We've got another senior here today, Austin Russell, who's been a member of this Bellhaven defense for four seasons. Austin, thanks for jumping on. Thanks for having me. What do you feel like you've seen in, in terms of when you first got here to now, the steps forward that this team has taken? Um, I think just our overall overall mindset as yep. a defense. Um, Coach Connor really preaches like suffocating offenses down yep. <laughs> until they can't breathe. Basically, yep. Uh, yep. that's that's what he wants to do every game. Like, yeah, uh, I know, like in games he doesn't want defenses to score over ten points. Yeah, like, he wants us off the field three and out yep. every time we go out there. So. Your role on this defense, obviously, this is this is a unit that heavily rotates, and, and Coach McCorkle's talked about that. Um, you know, this is a deep, deep defense. What does that mean for you guys being able to just stay fresh throughout the game? I think it gives <laughs> us a good. A good chance to win games overall because when you have fresh bodies, uh, everybody can go 100%. I mean, coach. Yep. Another thing Coach Connor says is when you're out there, go 100% because we got a guy coming right after you. So yep. Just be ready at all times, and he's always preaching to have our hats on on the side just in case somebody goes down or anything like that. So. Yep. In your kind of opinion, what has been the biggest factor in, in creating that change four years ago to now, um, where where you know you guys were winning a couple of games a season, now you're five and three, and and really have a shot at fil- finishing you know near the top of the conference this season. I think one thing that's really contributed to that in an overall sense is 
basically our mindset and from a culture aspect the team has changed a lot since I've been here yeah and uh, just like our mentality as a team when we come to games is a whole lot different our focus yeah uh, how we prepare for games is a lot different um, how much stronger we are helps yeah. us at winning games you know with coach wood and how he works with us yeah just things like that what was it about Bellhaven that got you out here and made you want to be a part of this program well for me uh, my small towns is one of those small towns like uh, if you don't get out quick you're gonna get stuck there, <laughs> kind of so uh, I wanted to get as far as I could as yeah. quick as I could and, yeah uh, Bellhaven had some really nice facilities uh, and the opportunities here in Jackson. You know, yep. you don't really ever get bored. There's always something to do here. Yeah, uh, that was just one of the things that really brought me out yep. to Mississippi instead of staying closer to Texas. So. We've got Bellhaven senior Rock Sheck Snyder here. Been here with the Blazers five seasons. Rock, thanks for jumping on. Thank you for having me. Rock's finishing up his fifth season with the Blazers. Mentioned that he's been a big part of this defense, playing on that defensive line this season. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of defensive seniors, so we're going to kind of get this question a lot. But we, I, I'm curious uh, how each of you kind of interprets where the defense is at. I, I, I think we've seen a whole lot of transformation over the past five years, no yeah. question about it. And I think a lot of that comes from uh, the, the, the bond that we had as the freshman group at the time. We yeah. realized what we were coming into, and yeah. it wasn't – necessarily the best situation in the world. I mean, we knew what our record was and we knew where we wanted to take the program. So really early on, we made that sort of commitment to each other that, you know, come whatever, we're going to we're going to stick together and we're going to push this thing forward. Yeah. And how far we get, that's <clears throat> dictated by us. Yeah. So we still hold that very, uh, very sternly as a as a D line. Um, we, we, we look at ourselves like the underdogs every single every single day, every single week. Yeah, we train and we practice as if it's our first day here yeah we take notes in uh, the meetings and we yeah. lift weights with the intent to push this thing forward yeah it's really interesting because it, you, obviously you're a member of that defensive line and that line is loaded right mm -hmm. you've got you know yourself you've got uh you got isaiah blackman Demetrius mm -hmm. brokenberry yeah. um you've got uh you could call brown of yeah. course who leads the conference in sacks having that group that's so strong and can rotate in and out and, and it feels like when I'm watching these games, you guys are just constantly driving each other forward. Is that kind of how it is? You guys are just constantly pushing each other and, and almost, you know, when somebody has success, now it's somebody else's turn to get yeah. back there and make a play. Absolutely. Uh, we were talking about this as a group not too long ago, but, you know, we would argue that our group, you know, and this is, this is a comment about us because we were having this conversation, but we argue that we're the most diverse group on the team because yeah. each one of us brings a different skill set to what we're yeah. trying to do, and each one of us rallies behind one another. Like, I, I'll tell you, Carlton Brown and Austin Russell are my two favorite uh, defensive linemen to watch yeah. because they're the ones I work closely with. They play on my side, and yeah. a lot of practice is dedicated to me making sure Austin's technique is right or Carlton's technique is right, and they're doing the exact same thing for me. Yeah. So those two are by far my favorite to watch. And as far as the D-line holistically, like I said, each one of us brings something unique to the table, and we really rally behind that, and we acknowledge yeah. that. And uh, it's a celebration more than it is sort of like, I do this better, I do this better. That's yeah. not really a conversation that we have. It's more yeah. of let's do this thing holistically and defensive line-wise, we're leading the ASC in sacks. Defensive line-wise, yeah. we're stopping the run. Yeah, defensive line-wise, awesome. yeah. we're doing this, that, and the other. So that's yeah. that's kind of how we approach it. One thing that stood out to me about the defense is you guys have been really pretty efficient stopping both both kind of attack, right? You, you've mm -hmm. been efficient run defense. You're average, uh, holding uh, opponents under 150 passing yards mm -hmm. a game. You know, that diversity in skill sets that you mentioned, that really plays a role, right, to, yeah. to, to creating that opportunity. What do you think is, is kind of the, the I guess, the, the mix and match? How has that been um, so efficient this season? And you guys have just seemed to get so much right this year, game plan-wise mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, personnel-wise, when you're taking on, uh, you know, what's a really stacked conference? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the most important thing that we do is we really break it down as simply as we can. So we go into each game saying, all right, all we really got to do is stop the run. We stop yeah. that next play, and we're, we're run focused on the defensive line. Yeah. But if we stop the run and we get them to you know, third and long, then we get to kind of reward ourselves by doing what we want to do, which is rush the passer. We get yeah. to have a little fun. We get to try things that we normally don't try. But yeah. we approach each game as sort of, all right, we got one job, and yeah. our only job this game is we're, gonna, we're not going to let any of those O-linemen off. We're not going to let them run in our area. Yeah. That's our that's our only mission. We're actually not that focused on what the DBs are doing or what the safety's yeah. doing. It doesn't matter to us. You know, It yeah. doesn't matter what the wide receivers are doing. All that matters is the guy in front of us, what he's doing. Yeah. And that's how we sort of approach it is we're going to whoop the tail of the guy in front of us, then we're going to line up and we're going to do it again. And yeah. that usually 
culminates in a, in, a, in a winning game for us. So Yeah, it obviously has been impressive, and it's paid off a lot this season. Uh, before we finish up, I want to get your thoughts, and I've asked this question to a couple of guys. You know, Bellhaven University and then the Bellhaven football program, you've mm-hmm. obviously been around it for as long as anybody here. Yeah. What has it meant to you, and, and what kept you coming back every year and wanting to be better and better? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you know, like I said earlier, I mean, us seniors, we knew what we were signing up for when we came here, and we knew that it wasn't necessarily the in the greatest shape. Mm-hmm. Um, but... We knew where we wanted it to go. We knew where we wanted to push this thing forward. And sort of what was holding on to that now, what we're holding on to that now is we want to see where this next generation of guys is going. Yeah. Because if you look at like if you ask me, I, I, I guarantee you Bellhaven's going to be competing in the playoffs in the next couple of years. And I hope we're going to be winning a national championship in the next few years. Yeah. Because that's what we want to do for these next group of guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That was That is the entire intent for us when we came here is we knew – we had a program that it was in need of repair. Our mission when we came here is to build this place up to what Bellhaven can be. And yeah. I believe we're getting really, really close to that. Yeah. But I guarantee you, Bellhaven, right now, we're not at our best. We're not at our peak because yeah. we have so much more room to go. And hopefully, and I fully intend that this is going to happen, that this team's going to c- carry this on even after we're gone. And it's going to do some special, special stuff. Good guy, Bellhaven senior Isaiah Blackman with us. Isaiah, thanks for jumping on. Thank you for having me. Your specific unit, obviously, you've progressively moved closer and closer to the ball every year. But being a part of that unit this season and seeing the strides you guys have taken, what has that meant to you as a player, and, and how has that challenged you to get better and better? Uh, to me as a player, it has meant everything. Mm-hmm. I know at the beginning of the season when I first got the call to go to D-line, I wasn't too sure about how this year would play out, especially how this year would play out for me. Yeah. But it's been a great move because we just – we were, we as a defense we made such great strides. Yeah. Strides that I don't think a lot of people thought we were gonna make. So for us to do that and me to move to D line and be able to do something special with those guys is it's, it's great. Yeah. Defense is taking some big strides this year and, and, and talking to Rock, he talked about that, you know, when you guys came in, you you guys knew what you were signing up for. That mm-hmm. the defense was not shall we say the focal point of Bellhaven football, right, when you guys got here. No, and now not. now that you guys are the tone setters, you know, what has that meant from from a from a togetherness standpoint, a camaraderie is a word Justin Percy used, where you guys came in and, and you guys kind of saw this is what we want the defense to be and that's where you guys have gotten it. What has that meant to you? To me, I can't even explain what that means to me. Yeah. Because when I first got here, we getting 50 points put on our head, and <laughs> there's nothing we could do about it. Yeah. But now when we go on the field, I know Mario likes to play all the time. He's like, man, we want to see the def- defense out there first. Yeah. Coach, not have it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay because, I mean, I know when we get out there, we're going to have a great time, and we're yeah. going to play for each other, and we're going to make sure you know that our defense is here to play in. Yeah, nothing to be messed with. We, we talked about this with, with a couple of guys that came back, and, and obviously you guys had the extra yellow eligibility. You could have finished in the spring. You guys wanted to come back. Mm-hmm. He, there was a reason. Brad Foley said there's a reason you guys all came back. For you, what was that reason, coming back and, and wanting to play one more year with this Bellhaven defense? I wanted to win it all. Yep. I wanted to go to the highest level with my brothers as, as high as I can get at yep. the three level. We worked too hard. Yep. We worked entirely too hard. And a lot of us, a lot of us seniors, we were here all summer. We made sure we put in the work so we can show the results on the field. Yep. Being one of the top defenses in the nation, we didn't think that was going to happen, but we know we worked for it. So yep. I, was, I just I wanted it all. We've got Demetrius Brokenberry on the show now. Demetrius Brokenberry has been with the Blazers for five seasons. Uh, Broke, thanks for jumping on. Oh, thank you for having me. Demetrius is part of that Bellhaven defensive line that has been so, so stout this season. We've already talked to a couple of members of it in this senior class. I, I want to get your opinion on where this team has been over the past, you know, when you got here to where it is now, just the strides you guys have taken forward. What are your thoughts on, on how you guys went from, you know, a team that struggled to, to, to put a lot of things together to now, where you're sitting, you have an opportunity to finish, you know, with a, with a couple of strong weeks at, at near the top of the conference? Uh, i say now we have guys that's dedicated to the program now, to in the past where, Guys didn't see improvement or move up in the depth chart. They yeah. look at, I tried it, okay, now I'm done. So now yeah. we got guys that want to compete to get better yeah. and move up in the depth chart on their own. Yeah. So that's what I think. Yeah, and you mentioned it, you mentioned the depth chart. And with that defensive line, it's interesting because it doesn't feel like there's, I mean, obviously you're part of that starting unit every week, but that is a unit that rotates heavily because it is so, so loaded, right? You know, coaches talk about this a lot. Carlton Brown technically isn't a starter on yeah. the defense, and yet he leads the ASC in sacks. That, that unit, that defensive line, you know, 
you guys just seem to challenge each other every week mm-hmm. and they just want to get better. And that was kind of the, the mantra we got from Rock and from Isaiah. What is your interpretation of that unit? How you guys just continue to get better week after week? Uh, just, just playing well with each other, encouraging each other, really. Even though, yes, Carl's not a starter, but we always try to you know, yeah. make sure he stay on his game and get more sacks every game yeah. to where be like, man, he's just really going off every week. Yeah. That rotation, too, with the defense, that especially that defensive line, that keeps you guys fresh. Is that a big reason why you guys have had so much success is just being able to rotate in and out, get breathers, and then get back out there and continue playing at a high level? Yeah, yeah. Coach Connor, uh, he do a good job making sure we stay fresh on the field. He asks me every every other time I come off, okay, how you doing? Are you feeling good? I'm like, yes, sir, I'm good. Or, no, can you put somebody else in? So he, yeah. he do a good job rotating us in and out. You know, the standard on defense has obviously been really, really high this season. You know, the passing game has been, uh, passing defense has been really, really top notch, under 150 yards per game. You guys are limiting opponents to, to under tw- uh, well under 20 points a game. Uh, you know, that, that defensive unit, where have you guys kind of progressed overall? You talked about that the team has kind of seen that uh, where, where guys came in and, and now you have guys that, that really want to be here and want to get better and, and overcome the adversary. But, but, you the uh, adversity, pardon me, but uh, this whole defensive group, you guys seem to be a together and, and, and close knit group. Is that mm-hmm. kind of the the right interpretation? There? Oh yeah. Um, basically, every week we just try to make sure everybody do their job. We all have our roles, and yes, we know we, everybody want to make plays, but ultimately, if we do our job. Our defense is pretty pretty special. Yeah, when you, when you guys are out there, you guys certainly uh, you guys certainly are, are terrorizing some opponents' <laughs> offenses. Uh, Rock talked about the coach Connor says he wants to suffocate the offense yeah. week in week out. Uh, you know, as a defensive lineman, and, and you obviously play in the interior of the defensive line, you get an opportunity to kind of eat up blocks, take up space, yeah. and 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 have a big part of that. Is is that fun for you to kind of just that idea of we're just going to go suffocate this offense and, and do everything we can to just 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 shut them down? Yeah, it'd be fun. At times, you know, it'd be like, man, I just got to get triple team every play, but then again. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I got guys behind me that I can trust to come in and fly and make plays, I can get I can hold any old lineman off. Yeah, and obviously we mentioned you came back after the spring. What was the we'll finish up with this? What was the the big reason that you wanted to come back and, and finish out uh, your final year of eligibility with a team that, that obviously you felt and a lot of people felt was was headed in the right direction? Oh man, just seeing everything that since Coach McCoy came in talked about what we wanted to do and how we wanted to be, just yeah. seeing everything come to light, basically. Yeah. We see everybody work hard every day, that want to come in and work hard every day. And just seeing that, I can't let it go too soon. So yeah. coming back was p- pretty cool to so see everything just unfold how we wanted it to. We've got running back Brad Foley on the show, final senior here today. Brad, obviously you've been here before, but welcome back to the show. Yes, sir. Uh, Brad has obviously been a big, big part of this Bellhaven program. He's been here for five seasons, been a part of this offense for a long time. He's Bellhaven's all-time leading rusher, nearing 3,000 career yards. Hopefully we'll see him get to that point in a couple of years. Brad, your five seasons here. What has it meant to you to, to, to see the progression from when, when you got here to what it is now? Um, it's kind of been crazy because y'all, I, y'all know my freshman year we got a new coaching staff and all that, so kind of didn't know what to expect after yeah. my first year. So it's just been a grind. It's been it's been a process just to figure out things, change the person I am and everything. So like seeing the wins follow up with what we've been preaching. It's yeah, just been good. Yeah, and, and you seem to be one of the leaders on this team, and, and, and that's kind of been the, the perception for me, you know, looking from the outside. You How have you felt like you've kind of, you know, been able to take hold of that leadership role, especially over the past couple of seasons where, where it really feels like you're one of the guys that's like, hey, w- this is something special. We're going to keep fighting here. Even if, if we don't realize what our ultimate goal is this year, we're setting these other guys up for success. What is, is that kind of what it feels like for you as a, as a leader uh, on this team? Uh, becoming a leader, uh, I've kind of, like, put myself as a leader, but I kind of have to have been forced in that role because I've been the longest person here on offense. Yeah. So, like, people just kept dropping off, so I just knew I had to step up yeah. and make a difference. So, like, it's kind of hard because I'm not real, I'm not very uh, vocal. Yeah. So like, it just some days I just gotta force myself. Okay, you can't have like bad days. Too many bad yeah. days. You gotta set examples because we have so many young guys under me. So yeah. like they all follow me. So I gotta set the example for them. So yeah, that's what motivates me to really be a leader on the team. All right, so we got a bit, a bit of a different question here, and then this one I picked this up at Howard Payne. I think you've added a new move to your repertoire. That spin move you hit at Howard Payne was yeah. pretty impressive. You are you continuing to add stuff to your. Uh, to your move repertoire here this season? I don't know. I feel like the spin move has always been a part yeah, of it. Yeah, it's always in there. Ever since, like, high school. Yeah. Like, I kind of had – I remember having, like, a little pole. I was, like, 
which one y'all think about the spin move or the jump cut? <laughs> I feel like I've always had it in my repertoire. Yeah. Well, you're part of a really deep uh, unit. That running back group is really, really special. You've got mm-hmm. yourself, Kobe Blunt, Deontay Gallishaw, Devin Daniels, uh, just to name a few of you guys. You know, we, we talked about it on the show, and especially you and Kobe, because mm-hmm. um, you guys are really like a, a two-headed beast in the backfield. And, and we talked about that, that you guys are each other's biggest cheerleaders, right, mm-hmm. in that backfield. You, you know, you, you're wanting him to succeed just as much as he wants you to succeed, yeah. and, and, and that's kind of then the M.O. You know, what has that done for you as a player, having a guy, especially in Colby, who's as talented a runner as he is, continue mm-hmm. to push you, but also be there and, and be the first to, to hype you up when you make a big play or, or yeah. you have a great game? Well, I always tell people that Kobe is better than me because I believe he is. <laughs> I'm just a, little, a lot more experienced than him. Yeah. But, like, it's always good having somebody pushing you, like, making you do better. Like, when he's successful, I'm successful. So, like, you got to prepare for both of us. You can't just prepare for me because Kobe's going to go in and do the same thing I've been doing the whole game. So, yeah, it just makes the offense flow better when you have two dependable guys back there. You personally, obviously, you broke the Bellhaven all-time rushing record earlier this season. You know, what does that mean for you? Being here for as long as you were here, yeah. you came back for that extra season, mm-hmm. and, and obviously to, to, to hit that height, a massive achievement individually. Yeah. What does that mean for you? I know you congratulate. You thanked everybody that's ever blocked for you. Yeah. You know, That's a really, I think you kind of perceive that as a team award, but individually, mm-hmm. what does that mean for you? I mean, when I first came to Bellhaven, I always wanted to like start something special <clears> and <throat> leave a legacy wherever yeah. I go. So that, was, that played a big part of me coming here. Like yeah. I could have walked on somewhere or went JUCO like a lot of people do, but I want to come here and like start something on my own. Yeah. Like leave a step, like leave a part of me here. And yeah. like people can like push to be better than me yeah. when I leave. So that's why I came. You talked about you've been really vocal. There was a reason why you all you all came back yeah, yeah. after the spring. For you, what was that reason that you came back and, and wanted one more crack at this thing? Well really well, you have one more year of eligibility. Like, you don't want to have any regrets when you get older. Yeah. So that played a big factor in me coming back. And then, like, just seeing all the momentum we had in yeah. the spring season, we just knew if we all came back, we all worked over the summer, that the fall could be very special. So you can see now that we we weren't lying to ourselves. We could see we see the potential. Yeah. We saw the potential, and we, we're reaping the benefits now. We hope you enjoyed hearing from some of the Bellhaven seniors. It was a fun opportunity to get to talk to them. Uh, just get their thoughts, I think, on, on what they feel like Bellhaven has meant to them as a school, as a program, uh, and the growth they've seen individually and as, as a team. Uh, we're going to finish up. We'll talk about McMurray, obviously. Homecoming weekend. It's a big, big week here at Bellhaven. There's a lot going on. Uh, it's going to culminate with that 1 p.m. kickoff against the Warhawks. Uh, you guys are trying to get back in the win column. That's somewhere you guys have been a lot this season. Uh, trying to get back in the win column. Mentality-wise, we'll, we'll start with the overarching kind of mentality coming back off a bull loss uh, coming back home there's a lot of energy what are you guys kind of preaching to the team and what is the focus of the team being uh, has it been uh, getting ready for this week um, well it is homecoming um, it is senior day so there's a lot going on on campus so we, we've, we really preach to them you know enjoy the week I, I want our guys to you know a lot of head coaches get all nerved up on homecoming and stay away from this activity and that activity and just be focused 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 well yeah that's all well and good but these kids are in college and they need to enjoy some things yeah. you know our our student development did a great job. They had a great cookout the other night. I think there's some events all week. And uh, I want our kids to enjoy that, you mm-hmm. know, and, and enjoy the campus life here at Bellhaven. I think that's important. Uh, but be a mature enough to enjoy the events but avoid the noise. Yeah. You know? And I kind of told them, while you're at those events, if your mind's not somewhere else, if your mind's not on the game, you're probably in the wrong place, yeah. you know. So uh, those things are good, and I want them to enjoy them. But you know, if you don't win the game on homecoming, it's kind of off or not. You know, yeah. the whole week's kind of a waste after that because it is all about the game on Saturday. So uh, I think we've got a mature enough team now that can uh, be mature enough to handle that, be focused, go to work, mm-hmm. um, learn from the mistakes of last week, and, and get us back in the win column. Uh, and it was great to hear from all those seniors. Those guys did a great job, and, and they're the best we have. And it's going to be really fun to uh, honor those guys this Saturday uh, as they play their last game in the Bellhaven Bowl. Getting these guys prepared to play McMurray, what are some things you focused on that you've seen from the Warhawks that you guys need to be kind of uh, addressing? Well, they, they are a much, much improved team. You know, Coach Neal's done a really good job there. I think he's probably a year behind our program in yeah. terms of rebuilding and growing. Uh, and that's one thing that I shared with the team uh, Monday when we first introduced them was uh, they're a lot like our 2019 team. Yeah. You know, he took over there two years ago. Um, you know, went through his lumps his first year, just like we did. Yeah. Um, had a good spring season, and, and then this year they've shown a lot of improvement, but they're not quite turning over the wins. Yeah. You know, the Sol mm-hmm. Ross game, I was really expecting them to win that game. You know, yeah. good for Sol Ross for getting that win, um, and I'm sure that was a tough one for McMurray to swallow because I think that's probably one they were counting on. But if you look at their games holistically, 
every game they've played is a one score game. Yeah. You know, even Harden Simmons, you know, they played Harden Simmons closer than we did. It's twenty four yeah. to twenty one. Yeah. You know, ETBU is twenty four to fifteen. Um, you know, they beat Southwestern who beat us. So this is a dangerous good football team that, that we've got to be ready for. Uh, looking at the Bellhaven side of things, you talked about offensively uh, against uh, UMHB. There were some mistakes, some some penalties, some uh, some protection issues, some some drops. You know, fixing those things and, and, and cleaning that up ahead of homecoming. You know, is that is that like a big key in, in practice, or or is that kind of a hey, we're going to take care of it. Just just continue to work hard, trust it, and those things will kind of take care of themselves. Uh, a little bit of both. You know, we didn't spend a lot of time when we got back Sunday on the Mary Harden Baylor game. Mm-hmm. You know, we watched it as coaches. We graded it. Uh, we talked to our kids about it, but we wanted to, you know, going into week nine, kind of flush it, fix it, and move on. Mm-hmm. Um, so we jumped right in Sunday night to watch at McMurray with our kids as opposed to recapping the film from Mary Harden Baylor. Because when you get to week nine and you play an opponent like that, we know who we are. Yeah. We know what our mistakes were. Yeah. Um, they weren't physical. They weren't schematic. They were just – you know, an issue here or there, pressing mm-hmm. in a situation, a drop mm-hmm. ball, uh, things that are very fixable, and those kids know exactly what they did in that game that they need to do better. So, yeah. why, you know, if it's game two or three in the season, you spend a lot of time, you study that film on things you've got to do better. Week nine, we know what we've got to do, and we've got to focus on the next one and just go 1-0 uh, this week against my Murray. This is a unit that's got a lot of seniors on it. we talked to, obviously, a handful of them. Austin Russell, Rock Schecksnyder, Isaiah Blackman, Dimitri Bergamere, Justin Persia. I mean, this is a, uh, a heavy senior group, especially that D-line. You, what does it mean to have those kind of leaders on that defense be able to reset and, and continue to kind of carry the torch forward week in, week out? Well, they've got a lot of experience to draw on, for yeah. sure. Um, and, you know, not a good thing, but they've got a lot of losses to draw on from early in their career. So yeah. they know how to handle those situations and show the younger guys how to do it. Um, you know, our entire defensive line is, is fifth-year seniors. Yeah. Um, that are starting, plus Austin Russell is a solid backup who's a fifth-year senior. So there's a lot of experience there. They've seen a lot of football. They know how to respond. They know how to show up and come to work. And so far this week they have. So uh, don't doubt they'll be ready to go. Um, At the same time, McMurray's got a very dangerous offense. Mm -hmm. They've piled up a bunch of yards. They're scoring points. Um, You know, they've got a running back, D. Robinson, that is as good as anybody in the league. Um, And they can throw it up and down the field pretty good. So. Um, they've got some weapons for sure that we'll have to be ready for. Yeah, you know, we get to this point in the season, and there's, there's I think, a perception from the outside sometimes that if, if you're not playing for a conference championship or you're not playing for a national championship, then then there's not necessarily something to play for. And that's completely not the case here at Bellhaven. Yeah, I think anybody who gets late the season and has the mindset or, or utters the words that you're not playing for anything, that's a real loser's mentality. Yeah. You know, I don't care if you haven't won a game all season. If they put it on the tee and they turn on the scoreboard, you're playing for something. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the way you have to approach the game. Um, fortunately for us right now, we're playing for a lot. Yeah. You know, if we get this win this weekend, um, this senior class will have been a part of the worst records in school history, and they'll also be the first class to ever have back-to-back winning seasons. Yeah. So how awesome is that? So, yeah, yeah they're playing for a lot. Yeah. Uh, they're playing for a lot that is very significant. You know, we get this one this week, and then we're playing for something even more that yeah. we can talk about next week after we handle our business against McMurray. Um, but we're definitely playing for some significant things. Um, we're playing for a winning record. We're playing to do that for the first time back to back in school history. Uh, and there are a lot of individual and team records out there that are pretty close to being broken that, you know, don't matter in the big scheme, but they do tell a story. You guys have been fairly fresh this year and, and been fairly healthy. You come into these last two weeks, uh, weeks nine and ten are, are a grind for everybody. Everybody, even if you're healthy, you're a little bit beat That's up. Right. Uh, you're a little bit tired. Keeping these guys fresh uh, and finishing the season strong. How is you? How do you as a coach you know, kind of key in and find that balance, right, of working hard and continue to get better and improve? Yeah, we have been really fortunate um, that we have not had a kid all year, and I hesitate to say this because we've got two to go. That's right, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> miss a game with an injury. We've had the same starting 22 for going into now nine straight weeks, which yeah. is unheard of. Yeah. And I give a lot of credit to Coach Wood and, and Ray, our trainer, um, for keeping our kids healthy. Um, and I give credit to our coaches for being smart in practice, you know, yeah. and knowing when to control the volume. And, you know, Coach Wood does a great job, and I really trust his opinion. I value his um, – wisdom and knowledge in these things and you know he shot me a text Sunday night just talking about kind of where the kids were physically and yeah. so we we made some changes you know we didn't go out Sunday night we played on the road we had a nine hour bus trip to Texas to play an undefeated team two weeks in a row that takes a toll on you physically and mentally yeah. so we chose Sunday night instead of going out just to watch some film 
uh, get ahead on McMurray. We really tailored our, off, our, our practice schedule on Monday uh, to decrease some volume, make sure we know our game plan, because at this point in the season, you're going to know the speed of the game and you're going to know the physicality. You yep. know? So let's just make sure we know what we're doing, and, and we'll be wise the rest of the week to make sure that we are as fresh as can be. Uh, Saturday at one because we'll need to be because they'll come in here with some juice for sure. You know that relationship between two coaches. This is not just a football coach. This is this is every coach uh, with their strength and conditioning coach. Th- those coaches see the players when they're trying to get build you know build their bodies up and get better. They get a real good perception of where they are physically, whether they need rest, whether they uh, they can push it up a little bit, elevate the tempo. You know, maintaining that relationship and, and having that understanding is that something you feel like you have with Coach Wood? Yeah, that, that's as a, as valuable of a relationship as any head coach can have, and I think anytime a head coach <clears throat> takes over a program that's the first position he needs to look at not his offensive and defensive coordinator is what's happening in the weight room yeah you know who's your strength <clears throat> coach do you need to bring somebody in and do you like you know the culture that's being built in there because yeah. that really has to be an extension of you because you know they're with the players more than anybody else because when we're out in the offseason recruiting they still have them every day yeah you know every day when we yeah. have our staff meeting before practice one of the first things I do is ask Coach Wood, hey, how did we do today in the weight room? Because yeah. he's already had them early in the day. He knows how guys are feeling. He knows what their um, energy level is. He knows who's dragging a little bit. And that helps us have a good idea of how to approach that practice we're getting ready for from a mindset standpoint, from a volume standpoint. So um, invaluable the relationship uh, you should have between head coach and strength coach. And we're so blessed to have a great one here. He's as good as I've ever been around. And um, as long as I'm a head coach, I hope he's right by my side. Yeah. You know, homecoming is special, though, and I think you go to, to most places, and, and especially these small schools, it feels like it's almost a bigger deal at these small schools. Um, th- there's going to be a lot of energy here. Uh, for you as a coach and, and for your players and, and just the whole program, what does it mean to be able to step out on that field, see you know the stands rocking, you know, people excited, and a lot of energy uh, in the stadium? And, and, and does that kind of you, – you guys, do you feed off of that? Even as a coach, do you feed off of that energy? Oh, sure you do. I mean, it, it's uh... – you know, it, there's nothing like going out there to a full house. You yeah. know, and I think this will be our biggest crowd all year. Yeah. I think it's going to be 68 degrees and sunny at kickoff. It's yeah. going to be a beautiful day. Yeah. Um, I've heard a lot of um, talk and got message from a lot of former players that are coming back, which is awesome. Um, if, if you're a former player and you're out there and you're debating it, get back here Saturday. We'd love yeah. to see you. Come introduce yourself to me. Um, you know, we played 24 years of football here, and that's not real long. So our alumni base is relatively small, um, but it is growing a little bit every year. And mm-hmm. it's always nice to see those guys come back and. Um, embrace what we're doing and and the biggest thing I tell the, the guys all the time is you know somebody sat in that seat before you yeah and somebody's gonna sit in that seat after you yeah so make sure you represent the past and the future well with the way you play yeah and hopefully what we've done this season hopefully what we do this Saturday against McMurray will make those previous 23 years of football players at Bellhaven really proud of what they, they're a part of yeah, brand new chance to go 1-0 and this week for the Bellhaven Blazers football program. Kickoff 1 p.m. against McMurray. It's homecoming. Make sure to get there early. There's a lot of stuff going on pregame. It's going to be a fun time here in the bowl. Make sure to uh, to show up and show out for that one. Coach, thanks for jumping on. You bet.